What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Today is Foot Champions Day. I am yet to play a game. Usually I do uh, chatting about the account and stuff after uh, the first games in Foot Champs. But today uh, I want to talk about some stuff beforehand. Uh, the reason why is because after packing that Dybala, the video hasn't gone live yet of me packing Dybala. But... Um, I, I, ba I, I basically, I looked at his in-games, I decided I want to use him. So I built a team uh, using players that we've got, and I, built, I bought a couple of players as well. Uh, we're going to take you through the team. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about just a little bit about my ideas on the account going forwards. And um, then we'll get into some gameplay and go into the post-com. Now, of course, I've got the Dybala. Uh, he's, he's currently about 800,000 coins. Now, I, like... He was, he was like 8.50 when I uh, when I got him. He's 8.30 there, 8.20, 8.16, 8.10. So he's, he's literally 800,000 coins. If he does get a man of the match, he'll probably go down to like 700. Um, if he doesn't, he might stay around the 800, maybe go up to the 900,000 mark. When he gets another special card, his card will come down. But dudes, I'm just, I'm so fortunate to have packed him. The, even if I sold him for 500,000 coins during Team of the Season, that's still an exceptional amount of coins to go towards funding uh, buying Team of the Season players. So after packing a player as special as this Dybala, I figured let me build a Calcio A team. We've never built a Calcio A team before, we've never used a full Calcio A team, and I get to use a lot of players that I love that I never play with. So Dybala goes in up front, I went and bought Salah, he is 138,000 coins. For an 87 rated Salah, his card is ridiculously good. I bought him for 138. It looks like his uh, his price has gone up a little bit, maybe 10k already. Um, so I guess uh, when I'm done with this Calcio A team, if I sell him smartly, I might be able to get my money back on him. And then I bought the 86 Ivan Perisic. I could have gone and got a special Dries Mertens, but I didn't want to spend too much money on Perisic. Like, I think I got him for like 75k. Uh, there was one there for 77k, but of course I got Perisic with the chem style that I want on him and in the position that I want him in as a left forward. Uh, so I might have I might have spent a little more than you can actually get him for, but because I got him in the, the correct positions and stuff, um, I was happy to spend that. And 75k for this Perisic card. This attack, it, honestly, it looks deadly. We've got a 5-star, 4-star in Perisic with insane stats. We've got the 4-star, 3-star of uh, Dybala with literally insane stats. And I'm going to be putting on Dybala uh, the Hawk chemistry style. Um, I, was looking, like, there's, I was looking at so much. And I, I don't know if uh, I'm going to stick with Hawk on him. I don't even have a Hawk. I'm going to have to go and buy one. But yeah, I'm going to be putting Hawk on him. And then uh, went and bought Salah 4-star, four 4-star. Four like, this, this attack is deadly. In the midfield, we can now use as a starter in his correct position this El Shirewi. Four star, five star, five ten, high medium, great stats. We've got this Daniele De Rossi, who I've not really played with much. I played with him more at centre back than anywhere else. Um, and he's going to make an incredible cent central midfielder as a defensive minded set. Medium high work rate, six one, four star weak foot, good pace, defending physicals. Like he's, he's a real good card. And then, of course, we're going to convert Nain Golan back down to a centre mid. And we're going to start using this red name Golan. In defence, uh, I already had a Barté. I'm probably going to go and buy the foot birthday Abate. Uh, he, he looks really good with an anchor chem style. Um, I've already got the Manolas here. And I believe I already have a shadow card to pop on him as well. I think I've got some shadow chem styles. I've got two, which is great because he's going to get a shadow chem style. And our red Tanelli is also going to get a shadow chem style. But this Tanelli card is ridiculous. Um, when you compare him to Manolas... Same defending, same physical, and only two less pace. So I actually get to, I'm, I'm happy to use this Tonelli. Low high work rates, which is ideal. He's not as tall as I would like at six foot, but Manolas with medium high 6'2". This centre-back pairing could just be phenomenal. Uh, I went and bought Alexandro for 7,700 coins with a shadow chem style already on him, and I went and bought uh, Handanovic for 10,750. So this is a team that's not like full of incredible special cards but is a very, in my opinion, a very well-rounded team. Uh, I think I'm going to have a lot of fun with this team. I hope I'm going to have a lot of fun with this team. Uh, we're going to use this and the other team. I, I have to convert um, Nangola. I, I mean, I could start them like this and then sw swap them in-game, but I don't want to have to pause it to swap and such. 
Uh, so I'm going to convert um, Dybala up to a striker and then I might have to go and buy the position modifiers for Nengolan back down to a centre midfield. Uh, hopefully not though, hopefully we've got already, I've got a centre forward to Cam there, which is enough. As long as I've got a striker to centre forward as well, I'll be able to convert him down. So I don't, I do have a striker centre forward, that's perfect. Um, I don't have a Cam to centre forward however. Do I? I don't. Um, so let's go and get Nane Golan and because converting him down to a cam is going to be enough, and it, it's a good place to be uh, to to make sure that if I do need to convert him back up to a striker, um, we'll be in uh, we'll be in a good spot there. So I don't have anything for Dybala. So what I'm going to have to go and buy, guys. Uh, so do centre forward to cam there. Uh, I'm going to have to go and buy a hawk and a cam to centre forward card. I'm also going to have to go and buy. I'm, I'm going to go and buy the special Abate. And that's going to be the team on uh, like for for the first uh, ten games. We're going to use this team and the BPL team, the main one uh, that we built uh, a couple of days ago. I've also sold a lot of items, guys. A lot of these Bundesliga two players, they are all selling, dudes. Uh, I'm going to sell as many of them. I've still got loads in the club, so I'm still going to try and make those coins. I might turn around and regret it and be like, oh man, like you know, if an SBC comes out in a few days that requires these players. I might have to uh, try and buy them back or do something different. But you can see there, they're, they're set. Look at these, like five, four, five Ks on all of them. I can't, I can't turn that kind of coins down. Like it's basically funded. Selling all these bronzes and silvers in the club has basically funded the ability to pay for, um, to pay for like one or two of the cards I've got. Of course, I've got a lot of investments sitting on the bench. I've got a lot of investments sitting in the club. And what I plan to do now going forwards is actually. Like I've said it a few times, but I was I'm in an ring because there's there's a situation where uh, let's go and get the uh, the things that we need. So I want to go and get a Barte special card. I don't know how much he's going to cost. I would assume maybe 120. That's just me off the top of my head. I literally don't know. Oh oh wow. Less than 120. Hello. 90, 91,000 there with an anchor chem style already on him. I will take him for 91,000 coins, dudes. That's really good. Now, what you got to bear in mind. So, um, what the uh, what the plan is, or what the plan was, and then wasn't, and then was again, and then wasn't again, because I don't know what I'm doing, was to uh, sell everything, clean the club out. And then I was like, no, I don't want to clean the club out, because if I clean the club out, I'm going to miss out on situations like what happened right now with the Bundesliga players where I can and can't sell them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sell everything that I can sell that has a steady value. So for consumables, for all these healing cards and such, sell, discard, get rid of everything. For fitness cards, the same. I actually want to keep the individual fitness cards, but for the squad fitness cards, I'm going to sell and discard, etc., etc., as I can. Contracts, I'm going to clean out the contracts. Get rid of all the golds, uh, use all the golds and the silvers and discard all the other ones. And like get Even if it's only three coins of contract and I discard 100, that's 300 more coins that I didn't have before. Um, so I'm going to get rid of, uh, as much of, of as much as possible. But I'm going to keep the players and make sure that I sell them all and completely when I don't, when, when I can. Like so many times I've been lazy, like so many times for marquee matchups, I've used some of the players that I've had. And then I had the potential to sell on some of the other players and make a good amount of profit, but I didn't because I was lazy or whatever. But now I'm going to actually go and do that. Every time a, a, a league or something has some value, I'm going to go and clean them out. And what I'm also going to do in the meantime, this team looks so good. Oh, I didn't buy a camp to send a forward card. God damn it. What I'm going to do in the meantime is... Uh, I lost my train of thought there. Never mind. You know what I'm talking about. But anyway, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna clean up, guys. We're gonna clean up. Um, so yeah, no, sorry. What I'm gonna do in the meantime is start completing those uh, league SBCs as soon as possible. I want to make sure I've got the packs in store. Uh, Cam to set for. I can't imagine this is gonna be that expensive. Wow. Wow. What? Jesus Christ, 1,300 coins for a camp to centre forward card. That's insane. That is insane. Um, but uh, yeah, let's let's pop that onto Dybala. Let's see, now everyone's going to get 10 cam. I know not everyone's in the correct position. We've got a centre forward and a striker, two cams and a CDM in midfield. I know that triggers some people as well. It doesn't bother me. As long as the player gets 10 chemistry, literally doesn't bother me. 
Um, I also need to get a Hawk chemistry style for Dybala as well. And then we are going to be good to go on the uh, on the Dybala train. I'm, I, I hope I hope he's good. If he, if I'm not enjoying him, if if I don't get out of him what I feel like would be uh, would be good, um, I will literally just go and sell him and get eight nine hundred eight maybe eight twenty. I may I might wait. I don't know. I don't know when I'd sell him, but I, I would go and sell him. Um, but uh, if if I'm enjoying him, if I get a lot of fun out of him, very much happy to keep him. Um, and, and use him and abuse him and then sell him come team of the season when I need to. So that's the whole team is set up. I'm happy with the chem styles. I might change uh, name Golan now uh, to, uh, I might put like an anchor or a shadow on him, but uh, I'm going to go and look at his in-game stats uh, after I finish this live section of the video. But this is now team two. So we've got this team and we've got the main BPL team that we're going to be using. So we're going to get rid of that squad. So we're going to be using this Calcio A team which is a good team. Uh, I think it's got a lot of good features about it. Everyone is on 10 chemistry. Um, I'm very excited to use it. And then we're going to be using this team as the second, or as the main team, the second team. Another phenomenal team. Uh, obviously now Nangolan cannot be a bench player. Nor can El Shirewi. Which means Lacazette will come on the bench. And what I'm probably going to do is what, is what I did last time. I'm going to put for I, I don't think I'm bronze benching by the way either. I, I literally start, I started bronze benching. Um, I put well, I didn't start bronze benching. I didn't. I played like a division one game with the bronze bench. The reason why I did it was because I was looking at um, the in the chat. Uh, skills said to Nick after Nick struggled this past weekend in foot champs. He said to Nick, Nick, just try bronze benching, dude. Just try it. So although I don't subscribe to the, I, I I'm absolutely adamant that bronze benching does nothing. I believe team rating doesn't affect anything. Uh, you know, we tried bronze benching one weekend league before, but I thought, you know what, let's just try it again. I'm doing everything this week in my power to try and get wins, to try and do my best. And uh, if, if putting a few extra bronzes on the bench actually helps that, then I might as well try it. It can't hurt anything because I can only make three subs. So uh, I've got Torres, Suarez, and probably not Lacazette. I definitely do want a defensive-minded sub to be... Uh, to be on the bench. So obviously we can't use the Calcio A dudes, although what I can do is I can put the Calcio A dudes on the on the reserve. So one, two, three. Uh, what have we got here? Do we have any more special Calcio A cards? Four. And then five will be Tanelli. Um or Nangolan or El Shirewi. Oh we got loads. We got loads. So uh, there's there's the first five that I'll put on the bench. To game fitness and what I'll do is I'll, I'll copy this team and we'll have two versions of this team and and or maybe maybe I'll just change the bench no we'll have two versions of this team and two versions of the other team with in like different benches each so that I can get the fitness back uh, on each player but I do have enough bronze fitness cards to last but I would prefer I don't know man maybe I'll just use two teams and just use some fitness cards and not some fitness cards I don't know we'll have to figure that out but I need to get rid of Lacazette I don't need to get rid of Lacazette. I just I would prefer a defensive-minded um, player on the team, and I might go for. I was looking at players like um, players that I've been using that I'd used previously that I haven't been using. Sorry, and someone like, for example, the Dario Serna might make a nice sub, a nice defensive-minded sub. See, we don't really have much here anymore because Nengolin's in the team. I could use Coleman actually. I could bring Coleman on and him be my uh, my midfield option. There we go. So that's what I'll do. So this will be our BPL team. Uh, I'm not going to upgrade. I'm going to use this team. I have a feeling this is going to be a good team for me this week. So this is our BPL team. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll consider how the rotation system works um, off off camera. But what, I'm, what my aim is for this week, guys, this is end up going to be a really long video. I might only put five games of gameplay in this video because otherwise it's going to end up being like super, super long. Um, and this is the uh, Calcio A team. Um, so obviously we'll also have we'll also have Suarez on here. We'll also have Torres and we'll also have Coleman and, and they will be my three uh, subs. So Suarez, Torres, like Suarez and Torres are really good attacking subs because you can use either of them in pretty much any position. They both have strengths and weaknesses. Um, and then we'll use Seamus Coleman who will come on as if we change formation, a CDM. If we don't change formation, a, a regular midfielder. He's got really good stats. Uh, you know, we can change again with this team, with this setup, we can change to any formation. We've got two, uh, you know, defensive minded CDMs in, in uh, Nangolan and De Rossi. So we can switch anywhere we want. But with uh, Suarez, Suarez can play out wide on like right wing, right forward. 
He can play a cam, he can play a striker. Uh, he's got the four star, four star, which is great. Uh, obviously, with Torres' pace, he can also play on the wing very, very comfortably. Although, you know, his shooting is so clinical that you can play him at striker. Don't necessarily recommend him at cam. But this is a good, uh, a good setup. Now, the aim for me this week, dudes, I've been straight. I was playing. Um, PUBG with uh, Nick and Zway last night, or last night when I'm recording this, probably not when you're watching this. And uh, look at that, three more of those players sold. Let's see how much more coins we, we gained out of that. Look at that, look at that, dudes. These guys just sell for so much right now. Um, and I, I enjoy having fun with gaming, right? And one of the reasons why now, this late in FIFA, I decided to switch up to this Calcio A team is because I was thinking about it and, and I was looking at team of the season, what's coming, what we've got planned, how we're going to prepare for it, but also what I want out of foot champions. And foot champions for the month, I, I just want elite one. I'm not good enough to get top 100s. We've we figured that out a long time ago and I need to make sure I play my best FIFA to get elite one. So... The amount of wins you need to get Elite 1 is 28 per week. I got 29 last week. So my aim each week is literally going to be 28 wins per week. I'm allowed one week where I can get 27. If I get more again, obviously I get a second week where I can get less and a third or whatever. Um, but I'm, I just want to play casually to try and get as close to 28 wins as possible, if not more, so that we can make sure we get the 20 red inform pack with Elite 1, so that we get the best opportunity to get the rewards at the end of the month. That's kind of like, that's the aim. Uh, and I don't want to stress myself, man. I, like, I enjoy FIFA. I love playing FIFA. I want to enjoy playing the game rather than sitting there so paranoid and, and stressed that I'm not going to get where I need to get instead of actually taking the time to enjoy the game. So this weekend league, I'm going to try my best to just enjoy playing FIFA. 40 games, I'm going to try and do 10 or 15 on Friday, 10 or 15 on Saturday, and then the remaining games on Sunday, and space it out. If I, if I get in a tough game and I get stressed, switch the console off, maybe come do some bronze packs, do some different things, like change, change the way that I'm handling and managing myself on this account, because... I don't like putting myself under unnecessary pressure and stressor. Press? No. Stress and pressure, not pressure and stressor. Although that's a new thing that we're going to do. Um, and then for team of the season, as we well know, um, it's, it's about getting prepared. So I want to have packs, not coins for team of the season. Obviously, I want to have coins and... I've got a lot of coins stacked in this club. If I sold all the sellable items, Dybala, Salah, Perisic, all these special cards uh, that, I've, that I've got, you know, Bonner's worth 100,000 coins. Uh, there's a few ones to watch is worth 50 or 60K. There's a few ones to watch is worth 30 or 40K that I'll sell on when I can. Handanovic, Alba, Varane, like all these cards. There's, there's a lot of sellables in here. There's a lot of sellables on my trade pile as well. With that Dybala pool this, current, this weekend just gone, I would say that I would probably have over 3 million coins if I sold all of like my primary items in the club. Um... But what I want to do is use these 500,000 coins that we've got over the next week or so uh, to enter draft as many times as we can, to try and win it as many times as we can, to try and stave those packs as much as we can, uh, try and win Division 1 as much as we can, because every time we win Division 1, that's 15,000 coins, which pays for the draft entrance. So basically, a Division 1 win is free packs from the draft. Obviously, I've had to work for the, the, uh, the 15k, but it'll be free packs for the draft. And then for the squad building challenges, right now, players are very, very cheap because of all these special packs. So it is a perfect weekend to complete all of these SBCs. The Bundesliga, the Championship, and for me, the Calcio A and the Premier League. I've got so many packs that I'll be able to store up. And then also I'll get the special Kane, the special Higuain, uh, the special McCormack, and the special Lewandowski. And the Lewandowski is definitely a player that I'm intrigued to use. I don't really care about Higuain. I don't really care about Harry Kane. I don't really care about McCormack, but that Lewandowski card, it does look like it would suit me and my style of play. So I'm super happy to try and uh, play play with that. So guys, um, that's going to be the end of the live section. I literally just wanted to show you the new squad that I built for Foot Champs and it's taken me 20 minutes. So I'm going to go and play five games. We're only going to have five games worth of gameplay in today's video, I think. Um, hopefully this team plays well, man. If I, if I Literally, if I start struggling with this team, I'll just get rid of it straight away. Sell everyone. Go back to two BPL teams with uh, a fun bench. And that's what we'll do. But this, guys, is going to be the end of the live section. Let's get into the gameplay. 
Okay guys, so as we go into the gameplay, the first thing we take a look at is a few of the items that have sold on the trade pile and then the fact that with that horrendous draft from before, we actually managed to win. Not only did we win, we also picked up an incredible prize for Team of the Season. Now, as you guys know, we're going to spam drafts as much as possible. I don't, I don't know quite know how I'm going to do it for video purposes yet. I don't know if I want to show the whole lot on video, if I want to show just the draft and the rewards, or if I don't want to show any of it and just, just play the drafts uh, in my own time without putting it on videos. But I, I want to know what you guys think, so let me know. But anyway, we win the draft, we open the draft reward, and we get a 100k pack and a 15k pack. So basically, for our 15,000 coins, we got a 15k pack and a bonus 100k pack. So very nice indeed. Uh, happy to stack another one of those up. That's now already two 100k packs that we've got for Team of the Season. And we could still potentially be three to six weeks away from Team of the Season. So lots of time to be able to sit here and hopefully get uh, you know three or four drafts in a week. On top of all the other SBCs that we're going to save the packs from, we've got about 70 packs available in the um, Calcio A, Bundesliga and La Liga SBCs. So uh, lots, uh, lots to save. Now I talked about this on stream last night and I want to talk about it here today as well. I want to just talk about, about you guys a little bit because uh, it, it's an interesting one to me that, that happens on YouTube and Twitch quite a lot. Uh, that, there's, that there's relatively no need for. But we'll get to the comment initially first. It's from Josh Little. He says, Hey Nep, I noticed over the last while that you haven't used Ebra up front because of his lack of pace, which is understandable. Yet in your last few videos, you said that the disparity between 75 pace and 85 pace is practically unnoticeable in game. I was wondering why, you'd use the why you said you'd use the team of the season Ebra around, around 80 pace, but not the player of the month Ebra with 74, considering in your opinion the difference is minimal. Just curious, keep up the great work from Ireland. Now, that is a very fair question, and I've obviously I've got my, my opinions, my thoughts, my reasoning behind it. But before we get into that, I just want to talk briefly about the comments that come along with that. So there was somebody said, he keeps doing this. When he got Team of the Year, Ramos and PK, he said high medium work rates mean nothing, and it's unnoticeable. Yet on his pack only road to glory, he said the only reason he doesn't use Van Dijk is because of high medium. He constantly says these things to bring the players' prices up to make him coins. Well, that's just not true. And there's no need for that. There's no need for you to try and attack me and attack my character just because I say some things are conflicting that you're able to take out of context to fit your own narrative. I absolutely don't say these things to bring player prices up to make me coins. Where am I making these coins? If I just buy one player and I use them, in fact, I think I lost coins on Ramos and I lost coins. In fact, I did lose coins on, not only on Team of the Year Ramos, but also the Man of the Match Ramos that I bought afterwards. I lost coins on him. How, where am I making these coins from? You can't, you know, you can't just start spreading these false rumours in the chat because now people are going to read this because this has got 10 thumbs up. People are going to read this because it's a... a a comment that's a reply to the top comment in the video and they're going to assume that I am actually doing this when that's not the case. So it's not a very fair thing for you to say. Um, the reason why, just for UKDMA that put that comment in there, the reason why I would say I wouldn't use Van Dyke uh, with high medium in my pack only account but the work rates mean nothing on someone like Team of the Year Ramos and Team of the Year PK is because of the other attributes within the player. On someone like Van Dyke, high medium is very detrimental to the player because he doesn't have the capabilities to recover from any mistakes that he might make due to his work rates. Whereas Team of the Year PK and Team of the Year Ramos have such well-rounded cards with unbelievable pace, more specifically in the, in the mind of Team of the Year Ramos, that even if they get caught 10 yards up the field because of their work rates, they have the ability to get back in. So I would subscribe to the notion still that... On someone like Team of the Year Ramos and Team of the Year PK, high medium work rates mean nothing, or at least very, very little. But on someone like Van Dyke, they could be very important to you because you could get caught out with Van Dyke moving up the field and it could end up resulting in you, in you conceding a goal where somebody with medium high or low high work rates wouldn't have got caught out the field and you wouldn't have ended up conceding that goal. So perhaps I didn't phrase it properly. Perhaps when I was talking about it, I made it seem like it was a blanket statement for the whole game. But you've got to remember that I, I, I produce a lot of FIFA content and it's very easy for me to say something that's in my mind at that time that's relevant to the context of that situation that isn't relevant to the context of a different situation that I can't just sit there and think, oh, remember that time three weeks ago where I said that thing about Van Dyke and I've just said this thing about Ramos and Piquet. Well, let me make sure that I can remember that 
for three consecutive weeks and hold on to that tidbit of information just in case I say something that contradicts it and then have to explain myself. It's, it's unnecessary. It's, it's, it's not that important. And then somebody else replied, uh, you hella smart for holding his own points against him. We need more of you. Now, whilst I don't mind that people bring up where, uh, where there are issues with what I say, because I, I like to clarify myself. And for you guys that know me and, and watch the videos a lot, that I, I take in a lot of information and I give it out to you guys. And sometimes that information changes. Sometimes it's wrong. Sometimes it's right. And so I address things as we move on. I say, ah, this, this was incorrect. This is the correct up-to-date information that we have available. Uh, but to, to, to want to look for people, like what, what Mohammed Essam here wants is he wants people to find faults in me. And this is what I don't understand with fan bases of YouTube. And I saw this from Miniminter and FIFA Manny yesterday on Twitter. And they both like indicated that they were falling out of love with YouTube because it's just co constant complaints. And whilst 95% of the viewership are just happy to watch the video and love and enjoy the video, the, the people that usually make themselves heard in the comment section are the people that have got something negative to say. And it's really, really unnecessary. And when, when you see it in other communities and on other channels, I don't understand why you guys as viewers of your favorite content creators, whether it's me, Miniminter, Bateson, Fangbanger, a &I Skills, it doesn't matter who it is, I don't understand why you would subscribe to what Mohammed Essam is trying to say, which is we need more of you to go and find this guy's faults and call him out on them. I don't understand why you would want to bring me down. What you literally like you're you're going about your day to try and find something wrong with what I'm saying rather than to try and see the positives in in the videos and in the content and I don't understand that. However, I do agree that when there are such huge contradictions and contradictions within my videos, absolutely pull me up on them. Say, "Hey, you said this and now you say this, but you see how Josh Little structured his comment?" Very respectful. He said, he literally says, you said one thing which is understandable, yet now you're saying this thing. Uh, was one, he, he says, was wondering why you've said you'd use one player but not the other player. Just curious. Keep up the great work. The, what, like, what, there's nothing wrong with that. And, and if, if everyone that has a problem with something that I've said that contradicts something else, if you can address yourself like that, I'll happily have a discussion with you. But if you address yourself with, oh, he's trying to make coins, or, oh, yeah, we need more people like you to come and come and bring this guy down, I'd, I'll probably just block you from the channel if I'm being perfectly honest because I don't want to see that stuff in my, uh, in my comments. However, um, so again, to go to Josh Little's comment, I've noticed over the last while you haven't used Ebra up front because of his lack of pace, which is understandable. I, I, I remember why I stopped using Ebra. Um, I stopped using Ebra because there was one specific game in one of those weekends where I wasn't doing well. And this is why context, in my opinion, is very important for almost anything all the time. There was a game where I, I got through on with Ebra, and it was one of those weekends where I was struggling, and I think I only finished with like 27 or 28 wins. I wasn't doing so great, and Ibrahimovic got clean through on goal, and he got caught up by a defender. I can't remember who it was, or what the score was in the game, or who won the game, but I just vividly remember Ibra getting caught up in the game, and thinking to myself, man, if that wasn't Ibra right there, if that was anyone with like blistering pace, that would have been a goal. Um, so I thought player of the month of Lukaku was out the next day or, or the same day actually I might have already had him in the club and was, just wasn't using him or it might have been the next weekend for player of the month of Lukaku and I thought you know what let's try a different striker let's see if we can if we can make something else work and for me the way my mind works when I, I play this game and when I do things is if one thing seemingly doesn't work let's try and change it you know I've said so many times this player is my favourite player and that player is my favourite player and people say oh how can he be your favourite player when two weeks ago this next guy was your favourite player it's because I tried a different player person and I enjoy them more you know so the the whole point of Ibra not having the pace to keep up in that one instance was what made me say to you guys okay so Ibra's pace is causing me a few issues so I want to go and find someone who's a bit faster and hopefully that they can do a little bit better uh, I said in the last few videos the disparity between 75 pace and 85 pace is practically unnoticeable in game and also if you if you go back to a lot of the things that I've said I've also said that there are instances where someone with 85 pace is actually slower than someone with 80 pace. And so in-game stats are important, and especially when considering on the ball, agility, balance and reactions are important to someone who will, um, 
with someone who will be running fast, right? So when we look at Zlatan Ibrahimovic and why I would have said what I said about his team of the year card or team of the season card, sorry, compared to his uh, his current player of the month card, what it comes down to is his in-game stats. So I've got his 92 rated card. Now, I have a hunter, card, a hunter chemistry style on him and he goes up to 86 pace, which is 86 sprint speed and 85 acceleration. He has a 91 agility, which is very high, 90 reactions, 95 ball control, and 92 dribbling, which are all very high. However, he only has 43 balance, right? When you look at his, uh, his best current card, which is a 94 card, he only has 44 balance. However, he has 92 dribbling on this card. And then if you put the Hunter Chem style, he now goes to 88 pace with 88 sprint speed and 87 acceleration. So when he gets a team of the season card, or if he gets a team of the season card... It's likely that if he gets no more special cards between now and team of the season, it's likely it'll be a 98 rated card with 80, 81 or 82 pace, which after applying a chem style will take him up to 94 acceleration and 94 sprint speed, somewhere around that mark. OK, um, so with that in mind, compared to the, the player of the month, Ibra, that I have that has 86 acceleration and 85 sprint speed, adding those extra 10 points, it may not be overly noticeable, except for the fact that when you consider his dribbling is also going to get boosted so hugely. So his 94 card has 92 dribbling. His 98 card would likely have 97 or 98 dribbling, which would mean to get the stat that high, they would have to improve his balance massively, which means his balance would go up from 44, probably to somewhere in the 60s, maybe the 70s. And then to apply a chem style that might also improve his balance, you've now got someone who will just feel faster. Um, so one of the reasons why specifically, I, and, I, and I didn't stop necessarily using Ibra because of his lack of pace. I, I wanted to try somebody else because of that one instance where I was like, oh damn, Ibra got caught up there. I wonder if a faster striker would have uh, done a little bit better. Um, I, I, that, that's kind of why I, I changed uh, from using Ibra. But I still gr I would say that Ibra is a phenomenal player and with the extra pace boost and I want to take your own words here because again I think this is important you said the last few videos you've said the disparity between 75 and 85 is practic practically unnoticeable but practically unnoticeable is not unnoticeable it is still no there is still that whether or not you feel it or you can tell the huge difference there is still a difference between 75 85 and 95 pace when I talk about how the, the in-game stats work and, and how you feel these, what, what I say about when I say 75 to 85 pace is unnoticeable is that when you ha if you did a, a sprint from one end of the field to the other end of the field with someone with 75 pace and a sprint with one end of the field to the other end of the field with a guy with 85 pace, and let's assume that all their in-game stats are the same and, and so on and so forth other than pace, the, when, the, when the guy with 85 pace finishes at the end of the field, the guy with 75 pace isn't going to be like lagging back at the halfway line. He's going to be very close behind him. So that very close behind him is where I say, okay, so this is quite unnoticeable because the difference is minimal in its, in its onset. However, when you notice something that's wrong and you try to make it right, you can't then... Not and not you, Josh Little, the, the, to the other people. You can't then just say, oh, wow, you're being a hypocrite because you want to use a faster player to not get caught up. Like, when I say stats are, are near the same, and there was a comment that replied to Josh that was kind of, like, got this perfectly. I would I would say to you, 90, but you would barely notice, you, like, it would be, yeah, practically unnoticeable that you would notice the difference between 90 pace and 80 pace. And the same between 80 pace and 70 pace. And the same between 70 pace and 60 pace. But that doesn't mean that 90 pace is as fast as 60 pace. Just because I'm saying they're unnoticeable in their kind of um, kind of uh, situations on the way down. Uh, you know, I'm not here saying that someone with 60 pace is going to be as fast as someone with 90 pace. So when we take someone like Ibrahimovic, who for me, uh, I have Hunter card on him, he gets 85 pace. His team of the year card, team of the season card, sorry, will have mid 90s for pace. And that little extra boost, even though I probably won't be able to notice it, it's not about, it's so hard to explain. And I hope I've explained it thoroughly. And, and I'll end the video here on this last point because it's going to get a long video anyway. You've just been sitting at this one screen for about five minutes already. It's not that you, it, when you've got something that works, you don't notice it works until it doesn't work. 
So when I have Ibra with 85 pace with a Hunter Chem style, I didn't notice ever really that that wasn't possibly enough until the point where it wasn't enough. And then when he got caught up one, one or two times in a few games, my mindset was like, oh wow, if I had someone with a bit more pace, they wouldn't have got caught up, they potentially would have scored. So it's not about saying, oh, I've noticed that he's slower. I just, I just don't notice that he's faster. I hope that makes sense. But anyway, I'm going to end it here. We could talk about this more in the next video if, if you guys want to. And again, dudes, I don't mean this from a negative spot. I don't mean this from, from a bad place. If you've got something you want me to clarify where I've contradicted myself in a previous video, just ask me to clarify it. You don't have to be a dick. You don't have to be aggressive. You don't have to be rude to get your point across. You could just, like Josh Little has done here, you could just ask me the question and I'll give you the answer. Um, but anyway, guys, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.